Who would like to have a souvenir? <laughs> I got three. Okay, put up your hand. Where? And this one. Okay. So we can light up. <laughs> Well, obviously, I was a badminton player and quite a famous one. Everyone calls me Chen Lim Chi. This is my Chinese name. The amazing thing is, not only then, but until now, 28 years. 28 years, not two years, not eight years. 28 years after I retired, people still recognize me on the street and still think that I'm still competing in badminton. <laughs> Let me tell you my story. I grew up in a public housing estate. I left running around and never stopped. It's too active, too naughty. And luckily, I, 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 I was born a very long time ago. <laughs> In today's world, I think people, or many people, will label me as hyperactive. <laughs> In my housing estate, everyone loves playing badminton, including my two brothers. One day, they went to a badminton team selection, and I just followed them. A coach spotted me and asked me to train formally. I became the Hong Kong champion as, at the age of 12. Asian youth champion at the age of 17. And a year after, I became the world champion. And I also won a bronze medal in the Olympics and a gold medal in the Commonwealth Games. This first chapter of my life was all about training and competitions. And I was the expert in badminton on and off the court. Then my life changed after I retired from badminton. Normally, or a lot of people would thought that I would become a professional badminton coach. However, I didn't take this as an option. I just follow my heart and pursue my dream to further my studies. Well, I didn't do it when I was competing. I was very lucky on a scholarship to the United States to study sports education at Springfield University. And Springfield is the first university who has sports education and it's quite famous. So I, I was very excited. I really want to go. When I first arrived at Springfield with a lot of excitement, then quickly I was in complete shock. I was, I was unfamiliar with the environment. I was lost and I was nobody. And I was just one of the many students there. I was scared, and I missed home very much, and I cried for a couple of nights. When I said I cried, it's really something that I was very wary about. All those years in badminton, I know what tactics to use to play against different types of players. For example, I play against Danish. They're so tall, they're so big, so I just attack them. If I play against the Japanese, they're small in size, so I try to use the back court and maneuver them on the court and be patient. I even knew how the feathers of the badminton, of the shuttlecock, affect the flight of each shot. 
than when I was in the university. I know nothing about most of the subjects, which really make me very scared. What to do? And then calm down myself and figure out why I was so scared. Because when I was in sports, I was the expert. I was the expert in badminton. I know every details about everything. But in, in the university, I really know nothing. So this is what? So it is the transition of knowing everything to knowing nothing that scares me. So what to do? So I'm thinking of when I was young, just like when I began with badminton. I start from scratch. And I started to open myself to ask my coach, to ask someone around me the things that I don't know. So I quickly realized knowing nothing was not such a bad thing. Because it makes me more humble and willing to learn. I was really grateful to all my classmates in Springfield because they taught me a lot and helped me to graduate, at least. <laughs> so after graduated, I came back to Hong Kong. I think you, you are very familiar with this place, right? This is in Sha Tin. So I came back and worked for the Hong Kong Sports Institute. I was a player there. I used to be a badminton player there, but now I, came, I went back and worked there. I was so excited. But I was asked to start a, a new department called the Commercial Operations. Commercial? I play sports, doing business. I was quite scared. I was quite nervous because to start my career with a job that needs to have sales target, it really nervous me. Why they need to have revenue for the institute is mainly because the Hong Kong Sports Institute separated from the Hong Kong Jockey Club. And they need to earn income to support the elite athletes training. Wow, so I think this is my mission as well. So I tried very hard. But unfortunately, I was very stressful. And I have all the physical sign, all the symptoms on my skin, and I have a lot of hair loss. Guai Tai Tao, I don't know whether you heard of it. And it's, it's shaved my hair. I was so scared. And luckily, I realized that I learned something from sports psychologists that I need to keep myself very calm and be positive every time. So what to do? So I immediately went out to the commercial world and looked for the commercial clubs and see what is in the, in the market and learn from them. And after three years, I'll be able to generate millions of dollars of income for the Sports Institute to carry on. As the program humming along, I was asked to another new challenge. But this time, there was Affiliate Affairs. So what is Affiliate Affairs? It's another new department, of course. So in the past, elite training only focused on sports results. But my vision on elite training is not just saying not just something on the achievement on sports field, but also the personal development of every individual. Sports didn't get a lot of community support at that time. Competing in sports has generally seen as no future. But I was very confident 
that I can change the perception of the society if I could get athletes admitted to universities. With a clear, clear vision in mind, I started to visiting university and knocking on the doors one by one. I went to the first university, and I mean, immediately got rejected. Then I went to the second one, and guess what? I got the same answer. I was quite angry at that time, actually. But the funny part was that the two professors told me the same thing. They said, oh, I really recognize your sports achievement. However, the university only accepted students with good academic results. Sports achievement, sorry, this time, it didn't count. I want to, <laughs> but I keep calm myself down. Thank you. And I, I still believe in my vision that I was right, because athletes are really focused, and they're determined, and they're fast learners. So I went to these third universities and tried to convince them. Look at them. Not just, not just handsome or beautiful, but they are really, really good athletes. They're role models. So I went to the third university and tried to convince the professor there. And I used a lot of successful stories as an example. I told him, if athletes got an opportunity to study, they can also excel. And what do you guess this time? What the professor said? Yes. He said, this handsome guy, Professor John Spinks, you know, provide the first ever sports scholarship in university. I'm really grateful to him. Actually, it's very hard for the university to set out another scholarship, you know, for athletes to get into university. But now you have athletes prove themselves they're great. We have a lot of great athletes today here. And they are now the brain surgeon, they are the architect, you know, they are the COO of, you know, the big corporation. They are the great coach, and they are the teaching staff at the Hong Kong Chinese University as well. Again, I know nothing about the university world. I just have the passion to build a better future for my athletes. In sports, we learn to embrace challenges and not to give up easily. As I've been working for the Hong Kong Sports Institute for a couple of years, suddenly one day, I received a phone call from the Hong Kong Jockey Club asking me to be the principal of the apprentice jockey school. My first reaction was, no more gao chou. <laughs> of course not. I know nothing about horse racing industry. But after I do some research, I said to myself, why not? Hong Kong racing industry is a very big industry with its annual revenue of over 100 and seven billion Hong Kong dollars. It's one of the top in the world. If you look at the jockeys, they are like exactly like athletes. It involves a lot of skills, stamina, and also strength. So I decided to turn a new chapter of my life. And I can say this was the most difficult chapter. I still remember when the first day when I got into the Hong Kong Jockey Club. Everyone from students to colleagues at all levels. The funny look on their faces. The question mark on their faces. Why are we even here? Who is this? 
she explain badminton? Why she get involved in the horse racing industry? How could this Amy Chen or Chen and Chi could contribute to horse racing in Hong Kong? So this time, knowing nothing is not so easy. Racing industry has a very long history and traditions. A lot of people have been working for the industry for a long, long time. And it's dominated by male. And being a newcomer, and also a female, you can imagine this is not a very easy start. But knowing nothing doesn't scare me anymore. I just focus on how to make a difference. I immediately put a plan together. And firstly, learn how to ride a horse. <laughs> it's so different from playing badminton. So after 10 days of intensive training, it's eight over my body. It's so painful <laughs> between my thighs. I, and I could hardly walk. Not even you know, walking down the stairs, you know, just like this. But this is very important because I need to know how the jockey smoothing is about. It's on a horseback. It's going to be very dangerous. So luckily, I got to learn from there. And then I look at the statistics. At that time, local jockeys only won 5% of the races. And the international jockeys won the other 95%. Wow. So I think the opportunities was huge. So I immediately think of the way of doing things. The first thing is to get the buy-in from all my students. So she, they all think that they respect me, but in a sense that I'm, a, I'm just a badminton player. But nothing to do with them. But when I first joined, there is a, an athlete an apprentice that he has been injured for a long time. And he was so, so frustrated and down. I brought in a Dai Fu, that is Chinese man therapist, to help him to recover very quickly. Just after two weeks, he was able to get on the horseback and ride. So the media thinks that I brought magic to the school. And immediately, the student respected me. And I earned their trust. And also, they knew that I could, brought, I could bring value at. And then the training program is also very important. They only exercise on the horseback. But I need to start a new training approach. You know how much? A jockey weight? Do you know? Not much. <laughs> but you can be a perfect size for jockey. 45 kilos. 45 kilos. Very good. You have 45 kilos? Oh, come with me. OK. <laughs> you can be a very good potential candidate. But I think, I don't think here, you know, we, we have too much, too many candidates here. Jockey's weight. Our apprentice jockeys only can weigh 47 kilograms. That is around 103 pounds. But they need to control, you know, how much a horse weighs? Who knows? OK, let me tell you. It's around 500 kilo, ki kilograms. It's around 1,000 pounds or 1, 000, to 1,200 pounds. So a 47 kilograms. Athlete control a 1,200 1, pounds horse. So it's very, very difficult. And the maximum speed for a horse, you know how a horse can run? It's around, it's from 40 kilometers. It's from 40 kilometers to 60 kilometers per hour. So, so they need to have great skills, and also they need to have a good fitness. So training program is very, very important to them. So, and also 
this is a Hong Kong area, so they have a lead-in program. Um, we can train them 24 hours per day. So every day, they have a fitness program, they have the fitness section, and also, because I need to also introduce a personal development program for them to teach them how to think. So I brought in tutors to teach them English, racing knowledge, sports science, sports medicine, music, and also financial management to let them you know, have all these kind of skills so when they can judge on a horseback, they can have a better judgment. And also, I need to discipline their sleeping habit as well. She's sleeping. <laughs> they need to get up at 3.30 a.m. in the morning. Did you, have you slept? <laughs> so every day, every morning, 3.30. Not just one day, but 364 days per year. But why not 36, 365? Because Lunar New Year, first day of Lunar New Year, they need to rest. <laughs> so I need to change the recruitment campaign as well because I found most of the people in Hong Kong doesn't know about jockey's profession. So I need to put up a big publicity campaign. It's a big recruitment campaign to attract more talents to join in. And also I reopened to recruit Females, for males and females should have given the same opportunity. So, after 10 years, it's not just 10 years, it's 12 years now, time flies, of hard work, instead of 5%, local jockeys now win 50% of all the races every season. I'm very pleased. I've nurtured many famous local jockeys, including a female, who has won the People's Choice Award and become very famous in the world. So, these are my four chapters in life so far. Every chapter gives me new motivation. Oh, because I kept myself, I kept putting myself in the situations where I know nothing. Actually, no one knows everything. And no one knows absolutely nothing. So to me, knowing nothing is a mentality. Knowing nothing gives me the courage to embrace challenges and not to avoid challenges. Knowing nothing makes me humble and keeps me motivated and to never stop learning. Knowing nothing is a mentality that teaches me to respect everyone and work hard to earn others' respect. In my life, the knowing nothing mentality has given me great advantage to stretch my limit to make people's life difference. So, what about you? Do you know everything? Or do you know nothing? Thank you.